What do you need? What do you want? I'm just gonna ask you what brand paint gum and what tip size do you use? I use my, for what, what, my brand paint gun of choice is Sada. And my base coat gun is a Sada 5000 with a 1-3 tip. I had to think for a second because I just pick it up now because I already know what I use on my thing. And then uh, my clear gun is a Sada 5000 uh, RP with a 1.2 tip. My base coat gun's a HVLP. Uh, my primer gun's a um, 1.9 tip Sada. My polyester gun's like a 2.5 tip. It's like a water hose. <laughs> and what else we got? Sealer gun. Uh, I want to say my sealer gun's a 1.4. Gotcha. Also, yeah, that was a question that came off the last video where you were painting. What size tips and everything we use? Or what guns? Yeah, somebody had asked. And then somebody had also asked your opinion on Sada 4000 versus 5000, which it seems like you're all about the 5000. I like 5,000. 4,000 was good. Um, I used it for many, many years. It's up there actually now. They're uh, the camo ones in the middle were the ones I used for a long, long time. And uh, when 5,000 came out, there was just some uh, really nice changes between the two that I like a whole lot more. So uh, when I had the 4,000, I found myself going to, back to my 3,000. Is my 3,000 up there? Yeah. So this is the first, one of the first guns I ever bought by myself so this is let's see uh 3000 with a one one three tip this is my uh i could lay anything down with this boy and then whenever the 4000 came out it was just about the same time we started the show so on the 4000 these were the two these are also this is the carl avery gun i've uh i've never used it the surf's up gun or the surf gun or whatever they called it but the camo guns were uh were the jam when I was on the show. And then the 5000s came out, so I swapped over to that, and those have been my uh, go to's. And then just because I'm a painter here, I got everything right. So here's another 3000. This is a 1 5 tip. This is the one I used for whenever we were doing like flake jobs and stuff. And then this is my polyester gun. I just had this one rebuilt. I've got two of them because. If anybody out there sprays polyester, you know that that stuff like sticks. It doesn't matter how good you clean it. It seems like they just never get clean, clean. Any more guns in here? Plus the old rule, you know, two is one, one is nine. There you go. Never heard it, but that seems like a plane. That's how it works with tools, man. Yeah. But I guess that's about it, man. I've got all kinds of guns up there. That's, that's an old primer gun. It needs to be rebuilt. And all these guns work, too. So... I'm a I'm a borderline paint gun hoarder, <laughs> but this is a this one actually still works too. I need to send it off to get rebuilt. This is my old mini jet, and then the guys over at Sada gave me a couple guns like this green one. These first two down here uh, were given to me because of my collection of stuff, and that one was given to me. And then there's an old Sada over there on the left. It's an old uh, cup gun. I think this is a 2000. As a one two two thousand gun, I think it's two thousand. The damn thing's so old, I don't know what to say. Just just a solid jet RP digital. I bet back in the day, somebody this was two or three paychecks for somebody. I don't know if this one works or not. I would only assume that it does. I would assume, but I say that doesn't look like the needle's moving in it. Oh well. Oh, they're all my guns, and I've got about 10 in my drawer out there of different things, too, because I'm kind of a, a little anal about uh, cross-contamination, so I've got a gun that I use for my solids, and I have one that I use for my metallic colors. Same gun, but I've got one of each, and then um, clear. I've got one for my clear, and then uh, I'm picky there, too, so if we're shooting like a matte clear or a... Uh, like a single stage flat clear or something like that, or like a single stage flattened color, like hot rod black or whatever. I've got a gun for that. Got a couple different mini jets, a couple different primer guns. I got all kinds of stuff. Gun hoarder, this guy right here. <laughs> I could build a whole other car 
if I'd sell some of my guns or quit buying guns. But, uh, sun's out, guns out. It's all my guns. Well, speaking of uh, using the camo ones on the show. That's why nobody that's ever a, saw what I was doing. That's a, <laughs> that's a frequently asked question on the old tubes. Are we going to get our own show? I, I don't think people are asking if you're going to get it. I think they're asking uh, if you're going to do a show. Okay, so we are being pursued by two different production companies um, to do a television show. Um, one just hit us up a couple weeks ago, and one we've been talking to for the last few months. And my biggest issue with a television show is I know how it was when we were on on uh, Fast and Loud, and I'm not willing to go through that again. All the long hours, working our guys to death, and um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, we have a lot of what we have because of the, um, the exposure the show gave us, but it's also what you make of it after. So I think we've done a very, very good job of, of promoting ourselves and showing people what we can do since we left. So I hate to take a chance on hurting any of that by trying to do a television show. So I, you know, all my customers are um, paying to get their car done and it's very expensive to have a car built and I'm not, I can't rush anything for television because these are real customers. So if we don't do a, a great job on their car, they're not gonna bring us something back or they're not gonna refer other people to us. So, you know, you gotta be careful on quality. You know, I know a couple other guys that have shows that, that do it different than the way it was done on the show I was on. So. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. I, I, you know, we work four tens uh, right now. Right now, we like we worked all this last weekend trying to get a car ready because um, we're going to SEMA. But uh, in the long run, or I'd say probably ninety percent of the time, we work Monday through Thursday. And I want to get to where we're only working Monday through Thursday to give everybody time off. Especially right now, it's like one of the hottest times of the year, and we're working Fridays and Saturdays right now to get this Bel Air ready for SEMA, which totally stinks. And we're going to try to do some things different for next year. That, no SEMA crunch, but it's always the plan. It's always the plan. You know, last year wasn't wasn't too bad, honestly, because um, there's no paint and it just if it didn't work, we made it work. But this one's going to be beautiful, so we've got to make sure that everything fits and works and is the way it needs to be. Um, so that's that. You know, I don't. My guys have wives and girlfriends and kids and families that they want to hang out with and television you know well, there's a chance that that could you know hurt the time that they have with those uh with those so me myself you know I, unfortunately i missed a good portion of my kids growing up when they were little because of the show and uh i just don't know that i'm willing to miss any more time so right now i could to see them every day and they come to the shop and hang out and they can come out in the shop and hang out if they want um, they're but, my they're my foremans. Yeah, they're in the back with Eric, <laughs> messing with Eric most of the time. But it's just a it's a different lifestyle for a television show. So if we could find out some way to come up to terms with a television show, and the contract was right, and the hours were right, and the timelines were, um, you know, doable. I guess you could say feasible. Then we'll talk. If not, I think what we're doing is just fine. So that's my two cents on television. Super big headache. If it can work out for everybody, great. If not, we'll just keep doing this YouTube thing because Eric doesn't give me any headaches 90% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That's it, man. We've got a lot of stuff. I want to I want to shoot here in a little bit with you. I know this is going to tie into your editing, but I want us to... Um, no, it's fine. I'll probably just drop this because it's already like... 10 minutes worth of footage there's something and then we'll i'll drop something later everybody's been digging like two uploads if we get that okay not telling everyone to expect to upload don't expect two uploads but there I'm gonna could try. be i'm gonna try we've got uh we got some things that i'd like to go over on the uh rf100 for sema absolutely that would be great we got a pile of loaded dennis carpenter stuff over there that i want to get out i'm super curious of you know dennis carpenter came out with a remake so you could, you're always able to buy the um, 70 to 72 F100 grill. You could buy those all the time. Well, Dennis Carpenter came out with a 
67 to 69 style grill, which is they're the only people remaking it right now. So I'm very, very, very curious to see what that looks like. Sweet. So it'll yeah. be unboxing. It'll definitely be. We got a lot of stuff to unbox over there. And old Garetta, Garetta Lynn. Oh, Garrido. Uh, everybody always thinks he's the uh, what the fat cow in the office or whatever. What what's the saying on that? I I don't know, man. Garrett takes a lot of. Garrett takes gets a lot of it. You know, it, <laughs> I love Garrett, man. I love Garrett to death, but I love that everybody beats him to death on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> I do. Because Garrett is such a genuine, kind-hearted person that he takes everything to heart. So every once in a while, it's super nice to see him be like, but, but I don't want to do the internet anymore. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Eric, quit filming me. I don't want to do the internet anymore. I'm not doing the YouTubes. That's... I'm not asking you guys to beat him up because he does take it a little, little too... Uh, a little too personal sometimes. I guess I'm thick-skinned because the show was so rough on us for a long time. Because there's always haters. Haters gonna hate. So I just... It's about what everybody thinks about me. Either you like me or you don't. I really don't. I really don't care. You know. Yeah. Yeah, that last... That last video that, that last he just video talked, got, got his butt, man. I did get a text that said, well, I officially don't need to do videos anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I quit YouTube. I quit YouTube. But it came back better the next day, so. Yeah. He is genuinely, like, super nice guy. Will do anything for anybody that he can. He, he helped relocate me here, which is why I'm here now. Yeah. And then, like, he'll be in the shop and he never says no. Hey, Garrett, I need you to run do this. Can you do this for me? Yep. And he's just beelines it out the door. Oh, so yeah. He, he can it. be in the worst mood. Or half a million other and things going on. he'll just leave. So, I mean, everybody gives him a hard time, but he he works his tail off. It may not always be out in the shop, but this, this, uh, this office stuff is not cut out for... I hate this. Like, I am in the, in the works right now looking for a shop manager. I want somebody... They can come into the shop, work with the guys, handle the guys, figure out what they need, get it. You know, if there's any design or anything like that, I can help with that. Like if it's something, but like if it's just, hey, I need, this is the part I need to get this part type thing. Um, I need somebody to run the shop for me because Garrett and I are gone a lot and uh, my wife watches the kids after school now. So we've always got... Uh, We've, I feel like we're 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 lacking in the um, take care of our guys in the back shop. It sucks to be like a business owner and know that you're actually failing at something, and we're <laughs> failing at um, managing. We're doing a, a mediocre job. When it was just me, I was failing at doing it because I couldn't keep up with everybody. So I hired Garrett. He took a little bit of load off of me. We probably split the load, and uh, now we're doing a mediocre job at keeping up with everything because now we've got. Uh, shows, emails, um, all of our vendors, YouTube, uh, what is there, uh, three, seven, eight guys in the shop working now, um, ordering parts for them, making sure they have TIG rod, welding gas, and cut off wheels and grinding discs and rubber gaskets to, you know, for the doors, and it's like just mind-blowing to keep up with, and I'm ADD as it is, so our building's 250 feet long, and I'll talk to Will in the back 50 foot of it. And by the time I get to the front, I forgot that I even talked to Will. You know, let alone got what he needed, ordered. So I'll get this shop thing situated. And uh, it's good and bad, but I've grown almost faster. The shop has grown faster than I can keep up with. So, which is great. It's growing pains, big time. Especially with the travel. The travel and the car shows have it really put something on me. Um, I think the travel and the car shows are a great thing, uh, and we can't not do them, but if we could find the right shop manager and train them, especially this time of the year, because we're about to be, we got one more show to do. We got Texas good guys to do left. Oh yeah. And then um, I don't think we're going to go to Scottsdale good guys after SEMA. Mm -hmm. I think we're just going to do Texas good guys, haul our car to SEMA, and then haul back and be done. Which. Uh... Do whatever you need to do to get me and the good guys here, because I'd like to get YouTube coverage for that'd be cool 
for everyone, especially since it's just right up the road. Yeah, it's down the street. You spend a Saturday just doing Filming some coverage on it. Talk to some people. Hell yeah. Talk to all of our vendor friends. We've got a bunch of builders that are friends. I'd love to give them a little little showcase. Then I think everybody would just love to see all the cars. Yeah, we got some really cool guys we work with. A lot of really, really nice people in the industry that, that we work very close with. A couple of builders that uh, become really good friends. Um, we get a lot of parts from builders, like Roadster Shop builds all our chassis. It'd be cool to go over there and talk to them and do like yeah. a little showcase on their chassis. Absolutely. I mean, I can tell you what I know, but they could really get down to the nitty gritty and tell you everything about what they're doing and how they're doing it, which would be a very cool little yeah. snippet. So, Oh man, you'd have a whole chunk of video to drop. Oh yeah. So we got all kinds of things going. We're, we're pretty excited. Um, sometimes you just want to crawl in a hole because you can't keep up with everything. I got a I got a big group of badasses here. I mean, everybody here is here because they're very, very good at what they do. And then me trying to make sure they have all the stuff to do their job is, is uh, sometimes a killer. So anyways, enough about me, enough about my moaning. So we'll get it together one day and uh, get rolling pretty hot and heavy. I mean, we're rolling hot and heavy now, but it sure be nice to be able to, to um, get my guys lined out a little easier in the mornings. I feel like every time I turn around, I give them a job that I think is going to take a couple, two, three hours, and it takes them like 30 minutes. <laughs> now what do you want me to do? <laughs> Shit. So, what else you want to know, Eric? That's kind of like my, uh, that's my Monday spiel. That's my Monday session. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do like every man does. I'm going to take his feelings. I'm going to swallow them and put them deep, deep inside and not talk about them for another week. And then we'll do uh, our Monday check-in next week about my bitching and moaning about what happened. <laughs> so. Yeah. And this is probably the most morning I got because I worked Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this week. That's what I heard. So I'm not very happy about that. But uh, another thing, we'll check in later. Uh, Adam Cross. Oh yeah, yeah. Is here? I think it's Cross. 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 Where's he from? That's not important. We'll get it later. It's Kraus. Kraus. Adam Kraus. That's what it is. I think he'll tell you. Adam's here from the refinery. Um, you know, they say if you quit learning, you're you're uh, you're falling asleep or whatever. What's that saying? I don't know. I must have slept through it. <laughs> I must have slept through that and not learned it. So, I I, I uh, you know I think one of the reasons why we are where we are is because we're not scared to try anything new, um, buy new tools. If you know, social media has been great. So if you see something on the internet you want to do or um, Instagram. Facebook or whatever, you know, we look it up, find out what tool they're using because we like what they're doing. So we've, uh, continuing education is important and our body shop does a very, very good job at what they do. But, uh, you know, Adam's here to teach us, uh, these old dogs, new tricks and whether we like it or not, you know, it, it, some of the stuff may help us and then hell, some of the stuff we might do, he might like. So hopefully between the two of us, we can knock out this 57 here in a week. And uh, see how things go, man. I'm pretty excited about having him here. I think he's going to be a great little uh, little asset for us this week to get this car done. You know, he texted me and said, hey, I hope you're ready to, to work your butt off this week. And I don't think he got here yesterday. I picked him up from the airport and brought him here because I'm lending him our shop truck so he can go do whatever he wants to do after work. And I don't have to cart his ass around. And uh, he was already complaining about the heat. So I don't think he was It's ready. not even high yet. I don't think he was ready for what he stepped <laughs> into. I'm going to come down and kick some ass. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> and humid. Yesterday was yeah. pretty bad. When he showed up, walked in the shop yesterday, Austin only had the shop door open. Uh -huh. So the shop was real hot because the other part of the shop was still locked up. So it was it was toasty in there. I don't know if he's ready for this or not. but I'm going to try and get footage back there. Hopefully... It might be kind of fun, maybe later this week, to throw up a GoPro on a time lapse. Yeah, I'll do that. That'd be cool. It gets it, hard with the DJ back there, always running the music. Well, we're going to be in the body shop. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not going to be Austin's. See, Austin's such an ass. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna bring wire cutters one day. Well, what I thought about doing is because <laughs> all these plugs are marked, Uh huh. so what I'm thinking about doing is go to giving the you the breaker, <laughs> and when you're going to go back there, just flip the breaker off and kill the radio. Because Austin's that guy that you turn the radio and he's like, Dad, don't turn my radio down. And then he goes up there and turns it up. Well, then when he turns up the, the radio, you can hear it on here, and then YouTube kicks it back because we're doing copyright infringement, Jack. Yeah. So Austin needs a punch in the wiener, 
and uh, an attitude adjustment every once in a while. He's just, he's cranky. He's super good at what he does, but I can't imagine that dude at like 50. Dude, 45, 50 years old, he's going to be so cranky. <laughs> Christine, sorry. that He's fixing to get married. Next month, I think he gets married. Jesus. She's got her work cut out. I don't know how she put They've been together for like ever, ever, ever. She must be just as salty as he is because <laughs> that dude, they must, I can't imagine the knockdown brawls that these two must have. <laughs> if I had to live with Austin, I'd probably, I'd probably beat him down with a baseball bat. <laughs> I mean, pretty close. Hell, sometimes when he's here, I want to beat him. I was going to say, I got to try not to do that some days <laughs> some, here. Some days I got to be like. That's why there's no body shop footage, people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or metal shop. Fab shop. Yeah, we'd love to give you more fab work, but Austin's so salty, it's hard to go back there and even even film. Yeah. And it's sad because he's he's super, super good at what he does, and we'd love to showcase what he does, but he's so uncooperative that we can't even do it. Yeah. But, you know, he wasn't hired to play YouTube. He was here to no, do a job. he so. wasn't. So I'm not going to sit there and fight with him over it. Next time he turns that radio up, we're going to put that thing on a plug and we're going to kill the power to it. He can't even use it. Absolutely. But then he'll be that asshole just back there with a hammer just beating on the table just to make it so you can't hear anything. He does do that. Guys, such a... I love him to death. I've known him forever. Austin, I'm not, I'm not, if you watch this, which I'm sure you are, because I think you might even have a code, because there's somebody on there that has no, no videos, no nothing, isn't it? There's a couple of people like that. They, I think they're fake accounts, and they're just on there talking and I think one of them's Austin, so if you see this, it's not because I don't love you, but you're.